established and another really established um character that's out there in the world is alan partridge and i, I, I noticed that you you you're you actually in the knowing me knowing you will episode yeah i did all the warm-ups as well for i'm alan partridge as well oh wow okay yeah How, what I'm was like, it like just being around you know that right. oh, sorry mate yeah. yeah it looks all right it doesn't look homoerotic in any way are you laid on the roof now yeah is that, yeah yeah it's fine Happy I'm perfectly that. happy with that, mate. Yeah, I'm happy if you are always. Well, it's just it's more comfortable. Yeah, I feel less exposed in the car parts. Looking at me, going, he's full of himself, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> they don't know you're asking, you're asking me questions. You see, it just looks like a man on the. Roof. <laughs> yeah, just filming yourself. Right, he thinks he is. You look like one of them Instagram beauties, you know, like one of them. You you, you could be yeah. you could be like one of them. I know. Do you know what? No filter. <laughs> Hashtag. I'm yeah, <laughs> I was in that. Yeah, I was in Alan Partridge, and I did all the warm ups. So, was it part of it, like warming up the crowd? Did, did is that how you got your part as Glenn Ponder's boyfriend? Or no, would, I, did, did I was uh, I was in that first actually. I got the part oh, first. Oh, right, okay. The warm ups I did was were the one that you probably don't even know there was a live studio audience for because it had sets on all four sides. It was the one where that set in the um, hotel. Oh, right. Okay. Well, I've watched them many times. Uh, Lent and Travel Tavern. Yeah. Well, they were closed sets. So in other words, the audience came in and they were presented with four boxes mm. and they couldn't see any of the action. They could watch it all on TV, but um, Steve wanted to um, play off a real audience. Mm. We acted in real time to the comedy. Uh, so he'd say hello at the start of the night and then get in the box and that would be the end of it. And I'd have to sort of, part of my job, um, my brief was not only to entertain them in between the takes, which is what you normally do as a woman, man, but yeah. also a man said, you've got to keep reminding them that it's genuinely happening in these boxes. Otherwise they'll think they're just watching it on telly. Yeah. Which they were, but it was also happening just the other side of that wood. Sure. That they so it, just to picture it. So there's four different boxes before different scenes. Yes, like, yeah. all, all in a long row. So some of the crowd, some of the, audience could see some of it some couldn't see any of it depending on what scene they were filming at the time is that how it is all the audience could see nothing at all times right Very usual for a sitcom because normally most of the audience can see most of the sets at most of the time okay they're different about it they wanted to film it like it was a film in other words with a set on every you know like closed sets i think mm. it's called maybe that's when you're in the nudie rudies and you don't want everyone to come and have a look. Um, but anyway, the, the sets were, you know, had four walls and a ceiling. Yeah. So as far as the audience were concerned, there was just four giant packing crates in front of them that they couldn't have a look inside ever. Is that, but they, unique, is that unique to Steve Coogan and Amandu Inuchi then? Is that is that something that well, they do only do? Or? As far as I'm aware, it was unique to that series. Or well, that, that, I don't think, I've not, I've not, I've not done a show like that before or since yeah you're either on location or you're in a studio mm. what, what was it like being around steve while is was he always in alan partridge mode or was it was he was he not here's the thing right he is always in character yeah <laughs> means that and alan partridge liked me as a warm-up man and liked warm-up men in general right and so and that was useful because when you're the warm-up man and no one really knows who you are and they've come to see someone else, yeah. any like any win like that's really, really useful. However, Tony Farino, and I did the warm-up for that as well, mm. couldn't stand me. Okay. Or, or, or really understand warm-up men or what the warm-up men were. And yeah. So he was really shitty to me. <laughs> <laughs> the audience. And there's just, even though the audience know, they don't know. And on some level, they just got the message that I was to be hated. So that was a really tough night. Wow. Okay. So that. So where was the Tony Farino part then? Was that a different uh, filming or something? He did. I think well, it was Mick Hopkins was in it. I remember. It was a. It was a. Was it a Christmas special or a one-off? I can't remember. But it was. Oh was right. Playing. Going back to knowing me, knowing you. So yeah, yeah. Mick Hopkins at the end and would uh, was. Um, Bond supposed no. to turn up and he was late. Oh no, no, me, no! It was another series or the beginning right. of a pilot. 
theories that never happened or, right. or did right. happen. That's a long time ago, and I was only yes, a fair enough. 